Hello again, folks. This is American Hussar Gaming, and I am Hussar. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you an off-meta PvE build that's fun to play. If you want to go and grind experience, or run around and just kill a lot of stuff, this is, uh, I call this uh, the DK Go Brrrt, because <laughs> it does. With the sets that we use and the setup that we have, it just absolutely mows through crowds of ads. And it does pretty good on its own when you're fighting world bosses and stuff too. But let's get to it. Attributes. 4 in health and 60 in stamina. Why did I do that? Was it the extra 4 points you get for the stamina doesn't make as much of a difference as if you had the 4 to the health, I think. So that's why I did it. So with max stacks, this is what your stats will look like with this build. My potion just dropped off, which is why the weapon crit just dropped off there. Race, we are in orc. Why in orc? Because I already had one. <laughs> but honestly, I also like it because of the uh, bonuses to going fast for sprinting and uh, the sustained bonuses you get from its racial passives. You get the increase to your max stamina, increases your max health, plus you heal whenever you do damage. So that's fun to do. And this, because of the mythic that we're using, that's going to be an issue so anytime I can do something to mitigate damage or regenerate health I'm going to want to do it and then finally that passive there for swift warrior which increases the weapon and spell damage and then reduces the cost of sprint and movement you could pick any other the other damage or sustain races and be just fine like imperial or dark elf khajiit or red guard any of those would be good too I've been experimenting with the mundus I picked the shadow because I wanted the extra oomph for critical healing and damage. For food, I'm currently using Orzorga's Blood Price Pie because of the increase you get for the max health and the health recovery. You could just as easily use my what my first choice is, which would be Artan Takeaway Broth, but I know that's expensive. So if you can't, if you don't want to do that, then you could do Dubious Camorn Throne. Good old lava foot soup and salt rice. And Orzorga's blood price pie, which is what we're using right now. If you want to see what the stats would look like with the expensive food, let's do this. Now we'll get to the gear. First set, Ancient Dragon Guard. This is a craftable set. You get a max health, weapon and spell damage, crit chance, and then a bonus to weapon and spell damage when your health is above 50%, and it adds a bunch of physical and spell resistance when your health is 50% or less. 50% 50, 50 or less. Again, because of the mythic we're using, you're gonna want that mitigation. So we're going dual wield, main hand, fiery weapon enchant, off hand, Nernhone for the poison. Because of the way the passives work for dual wielding, you could make a case to go infuse with a weapon damage enchant for a little more damage. I like to have the poison, so I use that. Back bar weapon is also an Ancient Dragon Guard Maul for the penetration with a crusher enchant, so that flips back over and helps you on the front bar when you, when you change your weapon out. Monster set. Using one piece of Slime Craw for the crit chance. You can also make a case you could also use any other monster set that gives you more than one bonus for a one piece. Like Dama House, which max Stam, max Magicka. Magma Incarnate for the Magicka and Stamina Recovery. Or Sentinel of Arkugams for the, for the healing. I have it in uh, Light and Divines for the passage you get from Light Armor. And the Divines for the bonus to my Mondays. The other set, Plague Break. All in Mediums, all Divines. I have max stamina enchantments on all of them. And then our mythic, Thrassian Stranglers. This is the part that makes everything go. Killing an enemy grants you a stack of Slode's Call for one hour up to a maximum of 50 stack. Each stack increases your weapon and spell damage by 23, reduces your max health by 120, and reduces effectiveness of your damage shields by 1%. But we are going to offset that with some of the champion points that we're going to use. 
Sloat's call is lost if you remove thoracic stranglers, go invisible, or crouch, or if you die. This gives you. This is kind of an overlooked mythic, I think, because it it was really overpowered when it first came out, and then it got nerfed, and people just kind of gave up on it because it wasn't meta and OP anymore. But they're still a really useful set, especially if you're playing solo or just want to go and run around and have fun in the open world. Now, I deliberately didn't gold out all of my stuff. I could have, but I want to just kind of give more of a, a middle-of-the-road average player out, um, build here in case you don't have a lot of money for materials or have a lot of extra materials laying around. Ancient Dragon Guard, all three jewelry. The neck, I like a little bit of extra stamina and recovery here. You could go with um, another weapon damage enchant, but I like the recovery bonus because it just gives me a little bit back. Then weapon damage enchants on both of those. Next up are our skills. First one, Bloodthirst. This is your spammable. I picked this one because not only when you does it do damage, but you get um, a bonus of healing for back for the damage that you cause. This, uh, in this case, is 34%. Deadly Cloak. I picked Deadly Cloak. You can make a case for its other morph, but I like this simply for the damage. Execute is good old Whirling Blades. Venomous Claw. I picked Venomous Claw because of the passive bonus you get here. Combustion gives you the uh, restore of a thousand stamina whenever you poison them. And it reduces their speed by 30% for 3 seconds. So it get, gives you a little bit of way to get out of the way if you need it. Cinder Storm. I picked Cinder Storm and we're keeping it at Magicka because of another one of the passes we're going to run into here. Again, it reduces their, their speed and, and heals me and your companion if you have one. Uh, by the way, I don't advise using a companion with this build until you build up all your stacks because they will steal your kills from you and you'll build up your stacks slowly. If you're going to use a companion, we'll get, I'll, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But I picked Cinderstorm, the Helping Hands passive bonus here. When you cast a non-stamina Earth and Heart ability, you restore stamina. Well, that's what the Cinderstorm is for. And Corrosive Armor. You could use the, the Magma version of this for even more, dam for even more damage mitigation, but... I like this because it does more damage back. And again, it's just handy to have another little way to do damage to your, your enemies. Back bar. Stampede is a gap closer and for the AoE that it lays down. Barb trap. That one I'm using because of the, the extra bleed damage it does and the increase to critical damage. Choking talons. I picked choking talons because it gives minor maim. It also has a nice synergy if you're playing in a group that your friends can synergize with. But I picked it mostly for the minor maim. Coagulating Blood. Again, I picked this one because when you're using Thrasian Stranglers, you're going to have a lot of missing health. And this will give you a lot more back for a bigger boost. A bigger burst heal back. Say that five times fast. <laughs> then, Ring of Preservation. This is kind of a flex spot. I like the extra one there. Um, and anytime you have a chance to get a little bit more healing or damage mitigation in this build, you're going to want to take it. And Standard of Might. You could pick um, Dawnbreaker or Meteor here. I like this one because... Um, whoops. Because it gives Major Defile to them. And for the AoE that it, that it gives you right there for standing in the area, increases your damage done and reduces damage taken by 50%. Plus, it's got that nice synergy if you're playing in a group. So let's talk about the rotation right quick. Before I enter combat, I'll pre-buff by hitting the Blade Cloak. Then I'll use the Gap Closer with Stampede to get the AoE going. Drop my two long, all my longest ones here. Whoops. Then Talons, Trap. I kind of goofed it up, but you get the idea. And then anytime one drops off, reapply it. So that comes back. Light attack did that. Light attack talons. Light attack cinder storm. Light attack light cloak. Rinse and repeat. 
That's all there is to it. Champion points. The green tree is pretty much up to personal preference. You're going to want things like rationer and liquid efficiency. I've picked Gifted Rider because I hate going slow. And then Treasure Hunter because it's always nice to get a little more oomph with the stuff you find. Blue Tree. Finding Finesse. Thaumaturge. To get a little bit more bonus to your dots. Wrathful Strikes for the damage. Untamed Aggression for the damage. You can make a point if you're having trouble with, you can slot um, Wrathful Strikes out and put Reaving Blows in to get a little more healing if you need it. On the red side, I have Bastion slotted because it helps mitigate the penalties that you get from using the Thrasian Stranglers. Strategic Reserve is one of my favorites because anytime you're not using that ultimate, you get a bunch of health recovery. Sustained by Suffering, it's kind of a flex spot. You could put Bloody Renewal in here to get, because you're doing so much damage, it'll help you to um, get your stamina back whenever you're killing the, the crowds. I just like this one personally. That would is not a bad choice at all. And then finally, Rejuvenation for the extra recovery. So as I said before, if you're going to use a companion, bear in mind that they're going to steal kills from you, so you'll, your stacks will accumulate more slowly. If you're going to use a he any of the companions, I recommend going with a healer. I like Miri as a healer. And this is what she's got. I have a mixture of Soothing and Quicken to, get the, to reduce the cooldown so she can heal faster. A little bit of aggressive here and there just so she does a little bit more damage when she does do damage you could easily just throw in another soothing here to increase her healing output too same with the hands there I have these because they are purple and one of the few purple pieces I got it's also handy to increase the, the buffs and debuffs so that's why I went with that there soothing there soothing 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 Let's say you wanted to go with more damage and pick somebody like Ember. Here's what I got for Ember. I'm using aggressive whenever we can because we're going to do damage. Everything, everything in light. I picked some the one medium piece here because it, it was in blue and I didn't have to pay for it. Prolific. There's nothing like having her dumping massive amounts of meteors on people's heads, so I used Prolific quite a bit here. Um, just had that handy, so that, um, as soon as I get something different, I'm going to in blue or purple, I'm going to change that to either, hopefully, Prolific or Aggressive. Hopefully, it'll drop in that color for me. Again, the Quicken to get the abilities to go faster. I was really fortunate to get that in gold when the, when the event was going on. You could use Isabel or Bastion here, but those are my two favorites. Sometimes Bastion's useful to do to use him as a, as a setup as a tank to pull aggro away from uh, from you when you're doing stuff. If you're going to use Bastion as a tank, I recommend this. Again, I'm using Augmented to increase the buffs and debuffs. Bolster to reduce the damage taken. You can make a case for having all of his armor and heavy and vigorous as well, to give him max health. So it's a mixture to get the reduced damage, increase his buffs and debuffs, and get him uh, taunting and tanking quicker. because we know that fashion and housing are the true end game in Elder Scrolls Online. Here's what I've got going on for my, uh, my outfit. First of all, I have the head cleared so it doesn't show my helmet because I like to put a lot of scars and things on my characters to make them look more interesting. So I have never, you hardly ever wear a helmet. Chest. The chest is Sai Sahan's Jack, which is you get from the Anniversary Jubilee boxes. 
shoulders. I had a hard time picking the shoulder out here because I wanted something that would leave the arms open. So if I could have had no shoulders as an option, I would have taken it. But in this set, I just picked a one piece mercenary epaulets. The colors I have here for this one are Fire Drake's Flame, which you unlock with the uh, Pit Hero achievement. You get the Pit Hero achievement when you defeat a thousand enemies in Battlegrounds. Sulfur Pools Yellow is the middle channel, which you get by un unlocking the East March Master Explorer achievement, which is just go and explore stuff and it, you get it. And finally, the other one is Divine Gold. which is the little buttons right there, the little rivets. Everything else is a default color, I didn't paint anything. Hands, Pyandonian Pyando gloves, I picked them. I picked them because it had the least amount of things. If I had a hands clear option, I would pick that, but I don't, so that's the closest I could get. Waist is the default waist, I didn't do anything to this. The legs, Scorionite Gladiator Guards. I got those in an, as a, a style page from one of the events that we do. Feet. Again, I wanted something low impact. So the feet here are the Prophet Sandals, which you get from Anniversary Jubilee boxes. Main hand. I picked both of these. We have the Iron Atronach daggers for both of them. The Iron Atronach style came out of Iron Atronach crown crates. And the back bar. I mean, they're both offhand weapons. I just did them both because I thought it would really look really cool. I love how they drip the magma like that. Two-handed Spell Scar Litho Arms Battle Axe. That's a mouthful. <laughs> I got this Litho Arms style as part of a gold reward from a Celestial Crown Crate. You can also buy it directly from uh, the, the Crown Store for 100 gems when the Celestial Season's active. But I think I, I just got this as a reward. I thought it looked kind of cool. I wanted to go with something unusual. So that's what I picked. All right, folks, that's all I have today. Please consider supporting this channel by liking and subscribing, sharing with your friends. It would be helpful if you went down in the comments and said, hey, I'm just following directions just so we could get the algorithm to go up. I appreciate everything you guys have done. Thanks for watching this video, and I will see you soon.